Dr. Khalid, uh, tonight we'll discuss a very important topic in pain management, which is the central pain mechanisms and syndromes. Uh, so let's get started and enjoy listening to Dr. Khalid. Okay. Dr. Dr. Khalid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim Today I will discuss a very important issue about the central pain mechanisms and syndromes. As you know, the sensation of pain must end in the central nervous system to perceive the sensation of pain. In some situations, the central nervous system itself plays a role in itself in perceiving this sensation of pain, either secondary to an event or primary disorder in the central nervous system which makes the patient feel pain. This is our society of uh, Egyptian Society of Chronic Pain Physician. As I uh, told you before that we did about 15 workshop and one uh, international congress uh, during the last four years and it helps too much to generate young uh, so I, I would like to introduce what, what type of pain or types of pain we know as we all know the pain may originate from may any tissues except the central nervous system or peripheral nervous system which is known as nociceptive pain the pain may originate from peripheral or central nervous system due to lesion in these systems, which is called neuropathic pain. If this nociceptive pain and the neuropathic pain does not manage it probably, the central nervous system will go in a new state of plasticity, which is called the neuroplastic pain, and the pain can be felt without actual trauma to the tissue or nervous system. This is simply because we ignore the treatment of acute pain and left it to become chronic and lead to these changes in the central nervous system. So we have nociceptive, neuropathic, this is, these are the main types. If well not cured or due to certain environment present in the central nervous system, we can get, get another type of pain, which is the neuroplastic pain. The neuroplastic pain may be classified anatomically or pathologically. Anatomically can be classified according to origin into supraspinal and spinal cords. Pathologically, can be classified into primary cause in the central nervous system, which lead to the sensation of pain, or it is due to secondary cause in the peripheral or central nervous system or the peripheral tissues that lead to secondary change in the CNS and sensation of pain. Here we have some terminology. If we talk about central pain syndromes, it is always secondary, and it is due to spinal or supraspinal origin. If we talk about central sensitization syndrome, it is always spinal in origin, and it is secondary due to either nociceptive or neuropathic insult causing acute pain, which not well treated. If you talk about the central sensitivity syndrome, it is almost always primary, it is due to supraspinal error in the cortex or in the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal system, which can lead to alteration of the nociceptors and sensation of pain despite there is no injury. So this terminology is very important to remember. And I will repeat it again and again in my presentation. Let us illustrate Neuroplastic pain can be originated from peripheral generators like tissue trauma or nociceptor sensitization or neuroinflammation and neural trauma, which is due to peripheral insult. These two, many, these two many, uh, so conditions, if not well treated as 
acute pain condition and left without management can lead to central sensitization of the spinal cord and the patient to go into central sensitization syndrome, which is very difficult to treat. As I told you last week about the importance of chronic post-surgical pain and how to avoid it. Or it, due, or it is due to central abnormal activity, like dysfunction of the central nociceptive system. And this is called in terminology, central pain syndrome, like chronic post-stroke pain syndrome and other situation which will I will explain. Or it may be due to primary dysfunction of the hypothalamus pituitary action adrenal system which lead to the syndrome known as central sensitivity syndrome, like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, and so on. So this slide is very important as terminology of the syndromes. These are the common features of neuroplastic pain syndrome. How the patient feel? He feels shooting lancinetic pain. He can feel abnormal pain sensations like allodynia, like hyperalgesia, like feeling a cold or heat sensation without actual presence, muscle and joint pain without a cause, vascular reactivity pain, and peristaltic visceral pain. This collection of symptoms are not linked together. There is no obvious cause. You can, you can see a patient with migraine and CMS insult told you that when the attack of headache occurred, he feel abdominal pain. This is the neuroplastic pain syndrome. The central pain syndrome, by definition, it is a syndrome caused by neurological condition or dysfunction due to damage or dysfunction of the sensory pathway of CMS, which includes the brain, brain stem, spinal cord. Many causes like stroke, multiple sclerosis, phantom pain, tumors, epilepsy, brain or spinal cord tumor or Parkinson disease can lead to chronic or central, chronic central pain syndrome. This slide summarizes some causes, either supraspinal or spinal. We have phantom pain, which is a very famous known syndrome. Central post-stroke pain syndrome, which is a rare syndrome, but we see it so frequently nowadays. Trauma to the spinal, to the, to the, to the brain, or supraspinal structures, tumors, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease. Spinal causes may include phantom pain again, spinal cord injury, syringomyelia, multiple sclerosis, neuromyelitis optica, and the tumors. All these conditions can cause central origin pain and the, ter the term is central pain syndrome. What is the mechanism of the, center of the central post-stroke pain syndrome, which, is, which was known as thalamic syndrome? Now, this, this term is become more, more uh, modulated to another terms. And the most recent term is chronic or central post-stroke pain syndrome. Central post-stroke pain syndrome is due to disturbance of the connection between the thalamus, which is the main relay of pain sensation in the CNS and the central cortex. This new situation due to injury of the, thalam of the thalamic nuclei or injury to some areas of the central nervous system, the thalamus and the cortex are locked in together in an altered state of activity lead to abnormal sensation of pain. So it is due to dysfunctional corticothalamic loop along the sensory pain conducting pathway. It was known previously as thalamic syndrome and digerine rosy syndrome, which is the name of the one who explains this syndrome. As I said before, the symptoms, abnormal sensation of cold or heat on one side of the body abnormal movement, cramps and muscle pain, emotional overreaction. This syndrome is very important to be diagnosed after stroke, to be probably treated by drugs and the other 
interventions. The diagnosis is very important. So we must put in your mind that some cases of cerebral stroke can lead to this chronic post-surgical post-stroke pain syndrome. So if we summarize the central sensitization, the term of central sensitization, please be aware about central sensitization and how to differentiate it between it and central sensitivity. Central sensitization is secondary to a lesion in the tissues, nociceptive or central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. So it starts by peripheral sensitization, lead to spinal cord irritation with high excitatory neurotransmitters, glutamate and uh, uh, B substance and so on. This will lead to sprouting of C fibers in neuromas and other pain pathways and with the up phenomena, which lead to activation of more and more dynamic range neurons in the spinal cord. It will lead to a state of hyperactivity of this nociceptive pathway, lead to that the CNS becomes a nociceptive processing mechanism from the spinal cord. So the spinal cord here is the origin of the, this atomic pump of pain, which will lead to a severe sensation of pain in the cerebral cortex. And the cause is peripheral, neglected, not treated well, and do not diagnosed well. Many examples of this central sensitization syndrome, like, as we all know, chronic spine pain and chronic post-surgical pain, chronic arthritis, chronic headaches. These, these are very common situation we face as chronic pain physicians. If we don't treat the element of central sensitization, every patient has a magnitude of central sensitization. If we don't treat this percentage, probably we can't treat the pain. Don't, uh, don't uh, believe that the patient has 25 years of pain and I do uh, some sort of intervention and the pain the second week becomes a pain free. This is wrong. This is not okay. We have central sensitization syndrome. It is proved. It's fact. We have to deal with. If you want to treat pain, probably you have to treat the origin. You have to deal, the bus, to deal with the pathway by nerve, nerve uh, block or radiofrequency or so on, and to treat the central sensitization element of each patient according to many factors, the age of the patient, the severity of the case, the chronicity of the pain, and so on. So don't miss to treat pain in these three aspects. What is the treatment of secondary central pain? It's must, it must be etiological rehabilitation, specific to pain treatment, and the psychotherapy in the form of multimodal and multidisciplinary approach. You can't treat chronic pain conditions, especially resistant cases, long-standing cases, cases without multimodal, multimodal, multidisciplinary. It is not simple an injection or analgesic, the patient becomes okay. The treatment of secondary central pain may be pharmacological in the form of tricyclic antidepressants, A2 delta subunit agonists like gabapentin and bregabalin. We have other anticonvulsants like carbamazepine and so on. Opioids play a role, play a role especially if we give it in high doses, local anesthetic sodium channel blockers, NMD antagonists, and steroids, all these pharmacological drugs can play a role in managing and treating the secondary central pain. The other in pharma interventional or non-pharmacological modalities include intrafecal baclofen. You dilute the spinal cord in baclofen or local anesthetic or other drugs or opioids to decrease the hyper excitability 
of the neurons in the lamina 2 spinal cord to decrease the central sensitization. This is the cause of using this. Neuromodulation is the same principle. And of course, some surgical management like tractotomies and uh, craniotomies and so on. Let us go to central sensitivity syndrome. I, as I told you before, it is primary pain disorder in the central nervous system. There is no lesion, but there is functional disorder lead to sensation of pain. We have no tumors. We have no Parkinson, Parkinsonism. We have no multiple sclerosis. This is a central pain syndrome, but central sensitivity syndrome is functional. So to, to feel this sensation of pain, you must have genetic predisposition and subjected to some sort of stress or environment. <clears throat> the most famous is chronic complex regional pain syndrome, which occur after any limb uh, injury or amputation and so on. This will lead to neuroendocrine, immune and mitochondrial dysfunction. When this occur, the stress response of the patient to this condition is impaired. So these changes can lead to hyper excitement of different central neurons and the patient feel pain without peripheral or central cause. It is a sensation. All these symptoms with pain constitute the main symptoms of chronic sensitivity syndrome. Simply speaking, it is, the problem here is here. The problem is in the hypothalamus, start from the hypothalamus. In a in normal condition, when the patient subjected to any stress, the hypothalamus will release, releasing corticotropin releasing factor, go to pituitary and see it, see it, see it, see it adrenal cortex, leukocorticoids in sufficient amount to deal with the stress. And the muscles becomes intact with no disruption of these muscles. If the patient, has predisposition for this syndrome, any chronic or early life stress due to a defect in amygdala and hippocampus, this mechanism is disturbed and the release the corticotropin releasing factor will lead to disruption of muscles, which will lead, which will lead to inhibition of the inhibitory mechanism of pain sensation, which is present all the time and altered production of the glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex and the patient becomes in a state of spontaneous pain without stimulus. The primary condition of central sensitivity syndrome is must always supraspinal. The defect, as I told you, is in the hippocampus, in the amygdala, in the hypothalamus. Some syndromes are present like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, which are, are, are the most for, uh, present uh, or the most high percentage forms of central sensitivity syndrome we, we always see in our clinics. This is interstitial cystitis and the chronic, chronic uh, 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 this abbreviation I will remember. This is this is the interstitial cystitis, irritable bowel syndrome, and this is the complex regional pain syndrome. I think this is chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Chronic pelvic pain syndrome is very uh, strange syndrome. In females, more the patient come to you. I have chronic pelvic pain. I went to gynecology, gynecologist. I do many uh, laparoscopies, I do hysterectomy, I do variectomy, and no relief of pain. Then I went to a neurosurgeon, and uh, I did the MRI. There is very small disc prolapse. They think that it is the, the cause of, of my chronic pelvic pain syndrome. I did laminectomy. 
I saw many patients like this. No one think that this pain is functional. There is no cause. You have to analyze the pain of the patient. You have to analyze which brings the pain, which relieves the pain, when it begins, after which conditions, the character of pain. This is very important, to analyze pain. And don't, don't uh, trust that some minor dis disruption or pathology you see, you, saw, you see in the MRI or, or sonar, or it is, a, it is the cause of this much pain. The pain will, will be very severe and associated with other symptoms like fatigue, insomnia, disturbed mood, and so on. So it is very important to diagnose these conditions, which are very painful and very uh, popular to see. But remember that fibromyalgia patient, which comes to you and said, I have pain in my whole body. It, it is known as well, widespread pain. Widespread pain, go into differential diagnosis for fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, other secondary causes like hypothyroidism, like vitamin D deficiency, like osteoporosis. So you have to exclude secondary cause. Fibromyalgia itself, it is very difficult to treat and it is characterized by remissions and exacerbations. The patient subjected to stresses lead to a fibromyalgia attack lasts for months. And when the psychological element was improved, there is some regression of the symptoms. But, but remember that fibromyalgia may be associated with other syndromes of central sensitivity uh, cause. So if you have a case of migraine headache, you have to exclude this migraine headache is associated with, with fibromyalgia patient or not. You have to examine the patient for the presence of fibromyalgia. You can find patient with widespread pain, fibromyalgia, with migraine, with interstitial cystitis, which is called irritable bladder. The patient go to toilet, especially females, about 30 times per night. There is no sleep. And, and, and again, many cystoscopies and many uh, urotroscopies and many, and there is no, no evident cause of this. Antibiotics and so on, as you think. Always, always think of functional element, disturbed function. Also, the patient with fibromyalgia may have irritable bowel syndrome or may have chronic fatigue syndrome. This, con this functional syndromes, I think uh, Dr. Saad can give me another presentation later on for this syndrome. I would like to explain this. So the chronic sensitivity syndrome, many symptoms you can find, the pain, sleep disturbance, sexual dysfunction, fatigue and anxiety, overlapping condition, tenderness or to touch, tender point, mood disturbance, discognition and multiple chemical sensitivity to anything, to perfumes, to uh, some drugs and so on. The treatment of primary central pain must be directed first to the treating hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and mitochondrial dysfunction in form of what? In form of improvement of lifestyle with psycho and physiotherapy. The patient feels that he is good when he knows what, what disease he has. If some patient come to you and told her that she has fibromyalgia and many, many patients like her have the same condition and go to the internet and see the groups of patients with fibromyalgia, they told each other what causes pain more, better, and so on, the patient feel better. And told him, I told her to improve her lifestyle not, not subjected to many stresses, try to accept some pain, to cope with some pain, coping and acceptance, this is very important. There is another specific, specific therapy, either pharmacological or non-pharmacological. Pharmacological, the only two or three drugs approved by FDA, FDA, FDA 
for fibromyalgia are pregabalin and uh, doloxetine, Cymbalta and Delirica. You can use two together in small doses or you can start by one and increase the dose. If no response, you can shift to the other. But fibromyalgia cannot be treated definitely by pharmacological. It is only one mode. So you have to be multimodal. You have to give drugs. You have to advise patients to do physiotherapy. The most three physiotherapy tools for fibromyalgia are therapeutic massage, therapeutic massage by a professional physiotherapist, hydrotherapy, jacuzzi, and stationary bicycle. These three modalities of fibro of physiotherapy proves to be more effective in treating fibromyalgia pain. So pharmacological, physiotherapy, consult psychotherapist for severe cases and try to tell the patient to improve her style of life. Also neuromodulation can play a role, especially in complex regional pain syndrome. The complex regional pain syndrome, which is consists of two syndromes, as you know, ref reflex sympathetic dystrophy and the causalgia. It's very strange to, to, to be below, to belong to this uh, central sensitivity syndrome because it must be triggered by a trauma. So if you, if you see my, my, my uh, slide here, I put complex regional pain syndrome with a questionnaire. What is it? It is central sensitivity or central sensitization. I think it is central sensitivity, and most of researchers believe that, and it is evoked by some minor trauma, like fibromyalgia, which is evoked by stress. So it's approved that it is a, a sort of central sensitivity syndrome. The second cause, if two persons, one with genetic predisposition to this syndrome and one without genetic predisposition and subjected to the same trauma, one will develop the syndrome and one will not develop it. Take home message, which is very important. Beware that there is some degree of central sensitization in almost all chronic and the neuropathic pain conditions. You have to believe that. So no effective pain management can be achieved without dealing with central sensitization component. No single injection can relieve pain for long standing years, neuropathic pain, I think. Beware that there are many functional pain conditions due to primary central sensitivity, the central sensitivity syndrome. And these functional pain conditions mm -hmm. must be diagnosed after exclusion of all expected general or local cause. It's very important. Don't think that the patient has fibromyalgia and so on, no. Try <clears throat> to exclude other secondary causes. The fibromyalgia patient, like all, like all patient, he may develop uh, lumbar disc prolapse. He may develop subarachnoid hemorrhage. So if you see a new event that's not explained on your patient, by the situation before and the history suggests that there is some secondary cause you have to search for and deal with. This is very important. At last, always manage in a multidisciplinary, multimodal approach. This is my advice for chronic pain physicians to be successful in their specialty, this fine specialty and difficult specialty. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. Khalid, for this uh, nice presentation. Uh, as usual, uh, you covered this issue. As we know, central pain syndrome is very complex to understand and difficult to treat. Uh, but Dr. Khalid covered the issue regarding the mechanism and management. Uh, I have a question, Dr. Khalid. Um, is there any, from your experience, uh, is there any rule for uh, the interventional pain uh, management for post-stroke syndrome as stellate ganglion or whatever? Which syndrome? Post-stroke. 
What's the stroke syndrome? I, I don't know what is this stroke. What is this syndrome? Post stroke central pain syndrome. Ah, post stroke, stroke. post stroke. stroke. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can't hear. Post stroke. Yes, some surgical, some surgical. Uh, the, as I told you, neuromodulation and tractotomies can can uh, can help in some cases. But sopra, sopra. for for stellet ganglion or no 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 I don't think there is no role. Uh, thank you, Dr. Khalid, because you make something very complicated to be a simple thing, you know. But uh, every now and then we, we can see in uh, Facebook or just in uh, other media, some people just make management for a patient, treating the him and the patient 25 years uh, with pain and disability and the patient jump from after this injection. Uh, what, what you can see for this people, what is the target for pain, chronic pain management, like at you to complete relief of pain or what? Thank you for uh, this question, uh, Dr. Yasser. I think uh, what you see, what you see in, on Facebook and other uh, social media and, and advertising uh, tools, it is a sort of uh, marketing for something uh, they think it is possible to uh, make the patients believe this miserable patients, believe that there is only one injection which is a magic and the patient becomes okay after this injection or radio frequency. In, in many cases, I don't know which place they do radio frequency. I think some cases they has, there is no nerve affection, there is no uh, access to the nerve, and they they write we do radio frequency, radio frequency or not. So they are first of all they are beginners, and they are uh, they have lack of knowledge that the, the, the chronic pain management is a multimodal, multidisciplinary art. It, is a, it, is, it begins with a proper diagnosis. As uh, we learned from Professor Omar Tawfi, rahimahullah, that the, the chronic pain, you must diagnose the origin of pain, pain origin. And then you can manage. If you don't know the origin of pain, you can diagnose the cause of pain, be sure that your management will be a big failure. You are a big liar if you told the patient that uh, I, I will do this uh, for one time and, the, and you will walk and you will go to club and you will play football and so on. This is wrong. They are beginners. They have to learn how to deal with the chronic pain patient. There, there are many aspects of chronic pain uh, generators. Uh, the origin of pain, as I said, you have to deal with if you if you can deal with the origin of pain, the pathway of pain with radio frequency and and nerve blocks and so on and the catheters and and that, this is the second modality and the third modality you have to treat the psychosocial element and the central sensitization, hypersensitization which occurs in the spinal cord or in the CNS. This is very crucial and this is very important. Thank you, Dr. Khaled. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Khaled. Thank you.